you you allow me to record you your voice yeah go ahead all right so i'm going to share this link this chung li let's see you use you still use chung li right yep not as much as karen but um i'm definitely trying to get back into playing a lot more so all right tell me when you have this chung li ex bird kick thing this one is very complex so i just want to see if you can break it down so please break this one down for me like press play and you can you know look through it if you want and just tell me what you see tell me everything you can figure out about it okay yeah, i'm watching it a couple times i'm gonna press play too just so i can become refreshed i haven't seen this in a while all right so tell me what you think um so, big thing that jumped out to me was she's airborne. It looks like her heart box doesn't touch the ground, so it looks like it's a low comp. But also, uh, I see that her hitbox is enlarged after, like, it looks like the first the first uh, active frame. I don't I know. I, yeah, it, like, it looks like it enlarges, so maybe that's what um, makes it consistently vacuum people. If that makes sense. So hold on. So I think I think we have maybe a misunderstanding. Uh, on the first frame, tell me what you see. Just a there's no hard box. Yes, but what else do you see? A big gray box. Okay. What is that? I have no idea to be honest. This gray box here and all these on all these um, on all these moves. If you see that gray box in any of these moves. This is the proximity block uh, hitbox. Okay. If a person holds back in the in the middle of that, you know, while interacting with that box, then they're gonna be put into a block seat. Okay. So you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I'm pressing jab um, in the training room and I'm not hitting you, I'm just whiffing in the air, um, but but the you know other character is holding back, yeah. then they're going to flinch. You know, Every time I press jab, they're going to flinch, right? So, yeah, because yeah, they're going to flinch into the block state. That's what this box is. Okay. Okay, so now notice this box exists for three frames, so let's go to the fourth frame. Okay. So the fourth frame is uh, the first first attack box and yes you're right it's invincible so so far the move is still 100 percent invincible on on all parts and on all parts of her body and uh so this is basically a four frame dp wow this is a four frame dp so when you practice against this move you want to practice four frame safe jumps or four frame uh attacks or like, anti four frame attacks that put that you where you can block yeah you want to practice you know, safe jumps or like dashing forward, anything where you can block on the fourth frame. So let's look at move seven, or uh, frame seven. Explain this to me. So the hitbox behind her, so it looks like that makes it a lot more consistent for jump ins. Because, you know, in this game, a lot of the anti or normals and, and like specials, they move forward, so it makes it a lot easier for people to jump in. But this kind of um, bumps that because the hitbox appears behind her also. It also means, up until this point, you could actually try to hit, you know, land in between her, you know, in the middle, and you might accidentally end up behind her because you, because there will be space behind her. You won't get hit there. Remember that? So yeah. on, this, on the sixth frame, is empty space on the sixth frame there in that same spot. Yeah. You know, so you your safe jump might actually be able to safe jump her behind her, uh, getting getting into that empty space there. Oh, wow, so you wouldn't even have to safe jump her as a four-frame safe jump. You could just space it like a six-frame safe jump as long as it gets behind her, and it would accomplish the same feat. Yes. See? Mm, wow. Uh, also, if you notice, on the sixth oh. frame and the seventh frame, the first hitbox moves upwards and backwards. Do you notice that? Yeah. That's that's important. So you got to, you know, this will help with their spacing. You could actually do some kind of... Oh well, see, I don't. You have to account for vacuum property. Um, I don't know how much vacuum property this move has in this game, you know. Uh, yeah. But if it has a vacuum property, then you got to account for it. But you can actually end up doing some kind of safe jump or some dash forward, right? Where you time it where you could dash forward into this um, the seventh frame and not hold block. You can just just empty dash into it with no block and where you would have got hit you won't get hit right here starting on this frame 
Yeah. You could literally just stand still, let her whiff, and she'll whiff right there in front of you with no vacuum property, and you don't have to hold block, and uh, you'll be able, to, you'll be totally free to do whatever. So that that's where this starts. Now look at the eighth frame though. That's when the heart boxes appear. But what's important about this uh, assortment of boxes? Um, her collision box appears, uh, and the heart boxes are outside of the hit boxes. Yes, that's that's important. So now now you won't be able to pass through her body unless there's some kind of glitch or. Or if you pass directly in the middle and the game has to force you to one side and it chooses binder. So this means that, yes, even though this move is invincible and, all, and is active for all these frames, you can actually use a jump and attack that has uh, an attack box first and interact with this uh, hurt box that sticks out yeah. first. So that shows you you know, how where you can hit. But notice as you move forward, to the eleventh frame, click on eleven. Wow, that's crazy. Do you see that? Did you know that she doesn't have an attack box here? No. Wow. What? Now, you, of course. Uh, oh, now, 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 let's look at the twelfth uh, frame. What's different about this? The hit boxes are now they're underneath the the hit boxes are underneath the hurt box, but it's spread out across it, like in terms of width. Yes. Now, if you try to. And interact with this with her foot, her toes. Uh, you'll be hit first if you don't, you know, have the right move. Yeah. See, so yes, that's that's a very important detail. And notice that uh, her torso, you know, like the attack box uh, on a pelvic area is actually further up. The attack box is. So this is more likely to trade right here. You're more likely okay. to trade. Okay, so now let's keep moving forward, and, and you see that the 16th frame has no heart box, or no attack box. Now, this is where it changes on the 22nd frame. Mm. So look, look at 22nd. Tell me what you see there. Whoa, what the hell? Um, so now it's like her hitbox encompasses ex entirely, like, around the hurt box so like it doesn't seem like there would be a way to counter poke it from above where her legs are exactly that's a very good point from above but it, notice the entire time after uh, you know the or starting on the first frame where the hurt boxes appear you could have hit you could hit her low the entire yeah. time so if this was like street fighter 4 a con could slide underneath all of these attacks and slide and hit her on her head yeah for example you know yeah. uh dalsim by the way could slide and hit her. Yeah, and I'm assuming Chun Li can do it also with the crouching medium punch. Oh yes. So there you go. So now see, now you have a way to interact. And I don't know. I mean, of course she's airborne, so there'll be a reset. Uh, I don't know if that could create some any kind of mix-up, but you know, it just adds some possibility for creativity or confusion. You know, maybe if you were to do a Chun Li slide, and it was spaced a certain way, or no, a Dao Sim slide that goes really far, like his. I don't know if it's his. Uh, sweep his hard kick mm -hmm. but imagine if Dalsim is really close and then he slides he's going to go behind her because he's going to hit her reset her and he might actually slide to the other side as she flips yeah. so that, and then that means Dalsim can do an overhead or some kind of you know uh, high low mix up right there yeah you know it's like things can happen with this uh, airborne you know property and her her box being fully exposed right there let's get back to the attack boxes above I want you to notice that yes, the attack box overlaps exactly on the hurt box. In, when any hit boxes overlap with a hurt box, uh, exactly on, at the same point for any move, what does that mean? Uh, that a trade is a po possible. Yes, right? the, these oh. moves or those frames are the ones that are likely to trade the, at the highest rate. Okay. So Ryu's Ryu's sweep is one of them. Mm, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, because there'll be there'll be situations like that today when I was playing against Rico, he would neutral jump, and I would uh, spinning the X spinning guard kick too early, and then we trade. It's because as he was descending, that's when he would be during these frames, and that's when his poke would just like basically go out. If I above, so. Yeah, so if I remember correctly, I haven't looked at this website in a long time. If I remember correctly, Ryu Sweep at his toes uh, has an attack box and hurt box that overlaps exactly on the same frame. Uh, right there, just like Chung Lee's. Now let's go to this 24th frame. Yep. 
and notice that. So this is the point where I want you to notice she's still airborne and she has no attack box. So this is the point where where there's no there's no risk to you and you can start hitting her. But notice she's airborne. Now yeah. let's now let's look to see where she becomes grounded. She Ready becomes grounded. Frame. Yep. So that is important if you want max damage combo. Okay. Now 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 notice from 33 to to 50. Notice that you have 17 frames of grounded frames to punish her with max damage. Yeah. 17 frames. So that should make it so that uh, you don't get anxious and nervous. Imagine if, imagine if this is the last hit and you have to land your ultra combo in order to win. You're about to lose the whole tournament. And if you don't time this right, you're gonna get an airborne reset and you'll whiff your super and everything. Whereas, yeah. whereas uh, if you understood this, you would be patient and calm and look for these frames and you would punish her with max damage and win the tournament. See that? Yeah. It's very important to know. But we'd have to factor in um, hit stun, right? So it would be like maybe you recover as soon as on the latter active frames of airborne. So. Uh, yes, you mean on a block? You mean block stun, right? Yeah. Yes, that's of course in the trainer room. You take all this information into the trainer room and you factor those in. You you understand that portion, that part of the move, you know. But just looking at it by itself. This is what you can gather. There's other things to consider too. So, as we talked about before, we don't know about the, you know, grab boxes and the uh, fireball invincible frames. They only they don't show much here. On other websites, like on the DeviantArt thing, that I showed earlier, I shared in the groups. There you can see grabable hitboxes. So let's go to Birdie so we can see what those look like on this website. So.